Okay. Welcome back. Um, the topic is my feet. Because Deji was saying, hey, put your foot down right before I said we're back. Yeah. You have a problem with feet, right? Yeah. Feet yeah. are disgusting and horrible. Of course. You're, you're ashamed of our own bodies. What are you trying to shelter us from? Ourselves? Doesn't make any sense. Sure. I'm not trying to shelter you from anything. I'm just trying to shelter myself from having to look at feet. It's, uh, Particularly, I mean... Particularly, like, man feet. Especially if they move too much, as yours do. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, in order to move around, you gotta have to have, to have feet. The feet have to move. But, I, I don't know. I don't... That... Hey, you do you. You can be <laughs> afraid of feet all you like, man. It's not afraid. <clears throat> They're just gross. And it's more about, I am very easily distracted by anything that's brighter than everything else in my surroundings. Oh, so you're racist. Yeah. Your black friends, if I had a different, well actually, wait, the sole of a black person's foot would be less black, wouldn't it be? Yes, and the right. rest of their body. Right. Um, but yeah, just in general, when I see something like, like a light out of the corner of my eye. I definitely am with something. you with the lights. My parents have always been like weirded out by like, hey, let's turn off this extraneous light. It's distracting. Yeah. And they're I, like, what? I like, you know, I can't stand <clears throat> having extra lights on in the background or like doors open where I can see something out the door or stuff like that. Like I, I'm just very easily distracted by, by any source of light. What the fuck just happened? You're in a loop. Oh, I'm in a loop. Nah, I gotta stop with the roll. I oh gotta... no, I had to hit the button. Hmm. That's the problem. Um, there we go. Aha, nice. Oh, there's another one. Oh man, this is cool. There we are. Oh. oh man, this is like a lot of visual information to take in. Yes. Gosh, remember being a kid when, like, any video game that was, like, slightly different was, like, really interesting? Um, uh, to me, it was more like if it was different and I didn't understand it, then it was horrifying. I just remember playing Fusion Frenzy on the original Xbox with, like, some, like, sort of acquaintance-ish kids that were older. And it was like, whoa, it's like this game, it's got all this, like, it's like this, the whole art style of it was like, I don't know, it's got sort of like a, like a skater punk... No. cyberpunk sort of aesthetic and I was like man this game is like so cool it's got all these all these mini games they're like totally different I couldn't believe it it was just so much to take in I remember the first time I saw a World War II sim when I was like 10 and it was like one of the original Medal of Honors it probably was the original Medal of Honor and like this was before I understood like the size and scope of video games and how limiting they are right. I just thought it's World War II happening and you're in yeah. it Oh my god, it was like unbelievable. Yeah, I remember being like pretty <clears throat> mind blown by like the, the 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 scope of the level at the start of Medal of Honor. It was either one or two because a friend of mine had it and I was playing it at their house and I remember that it just at first <clears throat> it seemed like, wow, there's this whole beach, like the whole Normandy beach that you can fight on. But then I remember like I tried to like run all the way across the beach and then realized that it's actually a really tiny box where the action takes place and you couldn't go very far. Right. Uh, so I was just like, oh, I see. Right. It's and like, not like, like you know, being a kid, you, you, there's like a game um, based off of a movie that you like. And my, and I'm sure most kids, I, now that I think about it, I'm sure most kids are like, oh, hey, it's that movie I like. I will get the game. But yeah. for me, I had a little bit more like, oh, wow, I like the story, so I could be in the story and do anything. Yeah. You know, I did not understand how video games worked, really. It was like, the ma the first one that, like, really disillusioned me was, like, a Monsters, it was Monsters, Inc. Uh, scream team. And it was like, oh, it's just like a normal game. It's not really the story of the movie. Oh. Yeah. And that's, and then I learned, and I was never fooled again. And then, you know, you, and then you watch the gaming fandom freak out about No Man's Sky. And I'm like, guys, when did you learn to not buy into this crap? Come on now, guys. That, by the way, is why video games are able to have such huge debacles in regards to being let down. Shit. Like... I don't think this really happens in other media mediums as much. Not nearly as much. Like, uh... Because, you know, people were all doing all the analysis about the No Man's Sky hype. Talking about... Like, how... Oh, it's, it's the system of media and the system of marketing that, like, that 
perpetuated this the self-perpetuating system where the the people behind no man's sky kept promising more and more because it gave them more coverage and and the game journalists wanted to keep promising more that more and more because it got them more clicks you know right and it's like well okay but why doesn't this happen in every other medium why does this not really happen in movies well or animation legal practices yeah, I guess, but I think the core of it is that there's so many unfulfilled promises in video games where there really aren't in like storytelling mediums. All, all the all the two-dimensional mediums, like movies and animation, you know. Like there's nothing they could promise is what you're saying? Like what could they possibly say right. is going to be there that's not going to be there? Right, like, like we've explored the medium of storytelling so much that like everyone knows what its limits are and like... Like, there, it's not like any any story can come out that will just be like an all-new dimension of what a story can be, the way that things were in, like, the late 90s when 3D platformers were becoming a thing, you know? Yeah, that Like, makes sense. video games, in terms of what their potential is theoretically capable of, is just not even remotely explored, right? Right. Like, a game... Okay. Imagine, a, like, a really cool epic story that you know, like Gurnagon or something... Yeah. And then think about, like, could there be a story that's, like, ten times more epic and rich and charismatic? I don't know. I don't know if there could possibly be something that could, like, resonate with people on that much of a level. You know? You can yeah. only make a story so complex before it becomes unwieldy. Meanwhile, a game like No Man's Sky, the, the version in people's minds that they thought they were going to get... Yeah. probably could mostly exist if you had unlimited development resources. Yeah. But, like, a lot of, like, stories that are, like, ten times better than the best story ever couldn't even exist in theory. Like, it's like the medium has, like, hit sort of a, uh, a plateau, in a way. Yeah. Video games totally have not. We are mostly just limited by development resources and, the, and people's ability to actually make the thing. Um, but, like... A game where you explore a whole universe where everything reacts to everything else, hypothetically you could possibly at some point make a processor capable of that, and if you were able to just like have 10 million clones of yourself to design all of the assets right. and, and, and write all of the dialogue trees, it might be possible. And that is the carrot on the end of the stick that causes Fuck. fiascos like No Man's Sky to occur, is that that feeling that, that that needs to come into existence. Why does that not exist, right? Yeah. That's what you want as a kid, is that kind of, of possibility space. Yeah. Uh, and whenever, and a lot of the best games that people love are when they, they, they make just a little bit more possibility space than you're used to, like the Souls games, you know? Yeah. Where, like, things react to one another in an interesting way, but you still can't, there's still plenty of, like, level geometry that, that you're like, hey, why can't I walk over there, you know? Yeah. Definitely the biggest, the biggest, <clears throat> like, thing that kills your immersion in a Souls game is, like, yeah, two-foot wall you can't jump over, you know? Yeah. And so that's why you get stuff like Grow Home, where it's like, all level geometry is relevant, you know? Yeah. That I mean, that's what makes Minecraft so great. Everything you see in Minecraft can be interfaced with, you know? Yeah. Everything can be interacted with with everything else. That's part of its key to success. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree with everything you've said. And I offer no comment in return. So I feel like what... Like, the innovations that I feel are most important to make, and I don't know. I Obviously, the extra credits people would be far more qualified in this statement, but... I feel like what really needs to be done in terms of innovation is development development innovation. Figure out how to make games faster and more efficiently. That way you can plow through ideas much better. Like the way that FromSoft goes through. Like they they came up with this system in Demon Souls, then they made like five more games or four more games exploring those systems, you know? Mm -hmm. And they, they were able to get one out every year eventually. And the way that Squaresoft was with uh, with Final Fantasy for a long time. Where they kept making all these incremental changes and they were coming out like every year sometimes, you know? Yeah. But so much of video games is like giant bloated experiments that take five years, you know? Yeah, I agree. Like, Mirror's Edge comes in, introduces us to the idea that, hey, maybe there could be a first-person platformer. Goes away for like almost a decade. No one's following up on it, you know? Well, they made a second one. But... Yeah, they're... yeah wait, is it out yet? Yeah, it's okay. that was like a year ago. <laughs> okay. I don't keep that good of a track. No. I haven't noticed. Or 
rather you've mentioned that you've fallen off the wagon when it comes to following uh, game stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> Is that just mostly because you're afraid of getting too deep into game stuff again? Like, yeah, that's that part of it. Reason? Like, and a lot of it is, like, just not being interested in the way that people cover games most of the time, you know? Like, just, like, right. reading the articles, it's like, it, you know, it gets kind of boring, but... But, yeah, also, like, um... Yeah, like, for the last couple of years, I've just been too busy to read the news and, like, keep close track, you know? And now I'm, I'm not about video games full-time, so... It just, I, it's hard to justify that kind of time investment to follow the game news. <clears throat> yeah, that's understandable. I mean, that's... I do know, I didn't, I was aware they were making a second Mirror's Edge, and I wasn't sure if it had come out, by the way, like... Yeah. I figured that because you said, is that out on there? Right. Um... There was a Game Maker's Toolkit about it. Yeah, Game Maker's Toolkit. Uh... Yeah, that's, that's what I want. I want people to... What really, video games need to be more derivative. That's what I want. That's why I said that everyone needs to rip off Undertale in the right ways. Yep. But they're too afraid to do it. I don't know if anyone's doing it. Well, I mean, if they are doing it, we're not going to see the fruits of that for a while. Indeed. You can't just make an Undertale in a year. Although it, Undertale itself was made in, like, uh, a year and a half. Yeah. Wait. No, maybe it was made in two years. Anyway. Whoa, geometry changed. It just seems like, uh, it just seems kind of like anime is, is a medium that's pretty good at this, of being derivative in <laughs> well, yeah. sometimes the right ways, right? Yeah, certainly. Particularly whenever you, like, explain, like, the lineage of mecha, yeah. of robots, it's like, okay. First it was, like, robots. Like, a kid gets a remote con or tells his robot friend to do stuff. Then, this dude came around and invented the giant robot. Yeah. And then this guy was like, hey, what if you pilot the robot? And then it was, hey, what if the robots are in a war and it's like a serious war drama? And then these people were like, hey, what if like we did more than just had robots? What if we also had a love story? And then, then hey, let's make a robot show that's about deep psychological issues. And then it was like, hey, let's make a robot show where the robot becomes the size of the universe. You know? Yeah. Like, incremental innovation of the concept. I agree. I think, I mean, that's what, that's what things are in most, you know, <clears throat> most of the world, like, as opposed to, like, I feel like artists are constantly trying to be like, oh, I have to be original, I have to make the, the most unique thing in the universe, and it's like, no other field works that way, you know? Yeah. Like, we had, we had phones, <clears throat> and then we thought, what if we made phones that you could carry around. Yeah. And then we thought, what if we made them smaller? Then we thought, what if we filled them with all kinds of cool technology that'll make our lives easier? And then what if we made them smaller? And then what if we made them bigger? Yeah. And then what if we made up our minds? Jeez. <laughs> uh, but... and, I, and I feel like the biggest problem with the AAA gaming industry is that they're derivative in all the wrong ways. Right. And innovative in all the right, in all the wrong ways. Yeah. And I say innovative because that's how Jimquisition says it. Innovative. Innovative. In all of the wrong ways. <laughs> Gosh. The, <laughs> the inaccuracy of, it, of the Britishness always, always makes me pause for a moment. Uh. Mm, you're Aphrodite. Uh. do it again. I don't want to do it again, Bobby. I don't want to. Whoa, that sounded like, um, auto-tune for a second. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Alright, this is the level where I fell down and didn't know how to get up. Oh, but fall and I can't get up. Yes, that meme. That good old-fashioned meme. Okay, so I was down here, and I was just like ramming my head into shit, and I. Oh. What? 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 I fucking did that last time. What? Okay, so these are just destructible. Well then. I uh yeah, regret all of my <clears throat> life's decisions. I have been a fool. Yes. I am. Uh, I'm a freak. I'm a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? I don't belong, belong here. here. Oh, oh, oh. 
You gotta read all the lyrics, man. Feed me. Feed me. Feed me. Feed me. Thank no. Feed me. I need to be fat. I don't even fucking give me an app. There we go. Aw, yeah. Existing of being fat. Um, fatness. You know, oh yeah, I, I didn't even finish what I was talking about with, uh, like, getting healthy after Radcon. Um, so the idea was that we, we would both become healthy and become beautiful. All three of us. Me, yeah. you, and Ben. Right. And, like, and, like, both of us, sort of at the same time, decided that we could only, we can't get everything. And, like, you basically, re like, resigned yourself to, I'll work out, but eat whatever I want. Yeah. And like I'm like I don't know how much I want to work out, but I'll just like not I'll just eat more correctly. Like it seems like your goal like as you've said is to be strong and being fat is okay. Whereas I have more of a priority on just being skinny and being at least not weak. We've both compromised in the opposite directions. Yeah. Which is good. That means we'll balance each other out. Hopefully. Oh my god, this is so satisfying. To just be fat and fall through like 20 floors worth of shit. Yeah. <clears throat> Being fat. I want to be wa Oh, the sewage. Gosh. I want to be Wario when I grow up. He's the perfect man. Yes, gotta get uh, an appreciation for the garlic, man. levels just break shit the level <laughs> yes because it's a garbage area it's just one of those days feeling <clears throat> like a freight train the first one to complain leaves with a blood stain. as moldy toaster infamously said it's a piece of garbage it's also a piece of trash <laughs> who's moldy toaster okay uh 2006 era youtube this guy made a video called like the xbox 360 sucks but he did one for every game console. I see. And like, he made it sound like the other ones were always great. He was like, the Nintendo DS. Why do we have two screens? What do I need two screens for? The PSP is widescreen. Widescreen is the future, man. Mm -hmm. He basically just like, he's like, so the 360, right? It has cell processing. What does that mean? I know I have cells in my body, but how does that help me view a video game? The 361 he filmed like in his shower while taking a shower. Okay. Like his hair was wet and he was he was shirtless. Fat dude, by the way. When he was talking about the DS, he's like, the Nintendo DS is a piece of garbage. It's also a piece of trash. And I was like, what? This guy's points are really stupid. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Were you like taking it seriously at yeah, the time? Yeah, like that that was you know, I was like uh twelve or or eleven. And like I, I I posted it on the Nintendo Insider forums, and someone was like, you know that is a joke video by the way. Also, it's old. It's an old video. It's a two months old. I'm like, oh. I was like, oh, I guess it is a joke video. And I guess that's how I learned the idea that people can have a persona on the internet. Yeah, like like a, an opinion they're not taking seriously. Right. <clears throat> Whoa, yeah. You know what was my favorite genre of videos back then was DS versus PSP comparisons. Because uh -huh. they were all unintentional ASMR. Really? Why? Well, for the most part. Um, because it's like someone will put their DS and their PSP down on their bed and hold the camera really close to their face and just very softly explain what the differences are. And they always explain the same thing. I do not know why that was such a prolific genre of video. I'm assuming it was just them all trying to get subs and they knew that that would get clicks even though it was a very redundant thing to make a video about. Seems um, likely. But yeah, a lot of them just had really soft voices, some of them women. And I didn't even know what, what ASMR was. It was just really relaxing. And this was like probably way before ASMR was a thing at all. Like that was even known by people. 
And, I, and a lot of those videos are deleted, so I don't even know if people dug them up. But in ASMR, like, Reddit and stuff, unintentional is a tag. I see. Because, like, it has its own appeal, you know? Like, it's, it's like, n them not trying to do it has its own dynamic to it. Yeah. And that's how everyone finds out about ASMR, at least until recently, is not knowing... I didn't know what it was called. The fact that that became a thing, the fact that ASMR became a thing that I heard about and learned about was crazy. It's like growing up in some, in like some older culture where like the idea of gayness is never even explained to you, uh -huh. and you have no idea why you get a boner for the same sex, you know? And then you find out about it, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is an actual thing that's acknowledged by other people, and you learn what it's called? <laughs> I just called it Head Zapper. I had no idea. I thought that was something that I was going to take to my- Head Zapper sounds like the name of some illegal drug. Yeah. Um... <laughs> That's just what I called it as a kid, and like, I just never thought that it, that it was ever going to go anywhere. I thought that was something that was never- that was never going to become a thing. And then it turns out it's totally a thing. Shit. Take some head zapper, man. <clears throat> It'll relax you real quick. Yes. I've always been wanting to do like a top 10 ASMR- a ASM artists video. Which is what they call them, ASM artists. But I just don't ever listen to enough of them. Like, what happens is I just I fisk around for the white for the right ones, for the right ASMR videos, and then I just listen to the same ones a bunch of times. Because they're usually the perfect ones. Makes sense. Also, if you listen to it too much, you your tolerance goes up. Shit. The only other ASMR person I know is Nate. And I guess also. Uh, Shade. Shade and Amber apparently do ASMR sometimes. ASMR sounds like a drug too, by the way. <laughs> it does kind of now that you mention it. Yeah. Nate says that he only- he can almost only listen to male ASMR. Yeah. Because if it's a woman, he has to jack off. Well... That's what he told did me. Did he put it like that? I believe so. It's like it's like... Well, it's so just it's a, just too I, distracting I, for him. He, d he doesn't like it to be sexual. I right. know that. Like, he sees it as... And he also hates all the, like, the congratulatory shit. Yeah. They're, like, telling you how you did a good job or whatever, how you're, you're, yeah. you're, I don't, you're so cool. I don't you're know nice how, I don't know how representative that is. Like, I don't know how many of those there are. I haven't, like, looked them up or anything. But, uh, I, oh, yeah, I only do female ASMR. Not for, like, I've never, like, been turned on by one, except for the couple I've listened to that are trying to be sexual. Sexual. But, like, I don't know. I just would rather have a woman sitting right next to my ear, whispering at me, or speaking softly. Like, you could just cut off the entire lower half of my body, and I would still have that preference, you know? Right. There's a reason why people generally have women be, uh, wait waitresses instead of guys. Or, yeah, yeah, you know. I don't know if I have any interest <clears throat> in ASMR, but I could just listen to, like, an Irish person talk all day, probably. Yes. With a soothing voice. I just like accents. Accents. And by the way, like, you know, like, there were plenty of unintentional ASMRs, like the DS vs. PSP videos, which were guys. And I usually, and I don't know why, but that one was okay. I was like, yeah, I can do this. to get around. I need to get to the top. Balloon me. Yeah, you're a bunch of baloney. Oh, hey. Didn't, didn't even know the end of the level was there, but I made it. I like I like the idea that someone made that keyboard their avatar, Amphituber, because like that I approve of that reference. It's just the right level of, of obscure and known yeah. for me. That's, that's, the, that's the level of reference that I like. It's like not even really a character, but it's integral to the game. Right. <sighs> One of these days, I'll play through all the Wario games. Because there's, the there's a there's a, a Game Grumps where they played this one um, Wario mm. game that's on like the GameCube. That was like a it's like a 3D platformer, yeah, but a 
I've always seen that. Like, what's it called? Like, Wario World, I believe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's the and one I'd, where... Yeah. I never even, like... I, I think I knew about its existence. Yeah, I've but always I, known about its existence. I just I don't know what it's about. I'd never seen anyone play it before. Like, yeah. I'd seen no footage from it. I had no idea what it was like. And then they were playing it on Game Grumps, and it looked fucking awesome. It was, like, super cool. And I was like, how did, how did I, who grew up on the GameCube, like, you know, played the vast majority of GameCube games that anybody cared about, and somehow I never even saw what this game looked like. Mm. It was pretty shocking. So I do want to play that game sometime. See, when I had game consoles, I just didn't want to rent games because it just made me nervous, you know? I only rented games a couple of times and it just felt unsatisfying. I didn't have more time with it. So I only ever got games that I could buy and I just had so few. Like every console, like... Like, I mean, my DS, I bought, ended up buying like 25 games for it. That's by far my record, I think. I mean, unless you count, like, you know, Steam, so... I guess it doesn't count, but, you know, anyway. Um... Yeah, I just never ended up buying that many games for consoles. It was just always too much money. I should have, I should have learned. I, I wanted to learn more about illegalizing media sooner. If only I'd had a person. I love that you've invented this term and you use it all the time. Illegalizing. Well, it, it encompasses, you know, torrenting, downloading ROMs, you know, streaming, doing like like cracking a program. You know, it all goes. Like, people like to use the term pirating, but sometimes it's it's not quite pirating as much as it is copying or, like... So just illegalizing. It's the perfect term. <clears throat> Even though it means something different. <laughs> you know, make to make something illegal would be to illegalize. Yeah. Um... Yeah, uh, oh yeah, playing, playing video games. Uh, you just said, um, like you had something to say, so I was <laughs> just, uh, letting you continue. But, um, yeah, for me, because I grew up on consoles and stuff, and it was like, uh, we just didn't have enough money to buy games, usually. So we right. rented them just because it was, we, we were poor, right. you know? I mean, like, we didn't either. We just almost never bought games. Like, we right. bought, like, we, we, like, I probably bought, like, maybe four GameCube games. I'm like, it's, like, very small amount, you know? Did you have like other consoles though like did you how many consoles did let's you say um you know i just like started with like windows 95 which was like you know when i was like a baby and i just played on that all, all the time then when i was like six we got a ps1 which was a ps1 right. uh not the ps2 just because you know the ps1 is so much more cheap and had so many more games at the time so you're saying the ps2 was out yeah you, you had a PS2. ps1 and we ended up getting like 15 games for it or so. I just had no way of knowing which games to get. So I mostly bought like tie-in games. Right. Like there was a pinball game. That was by far like the one I enjoyed the most really. Like, I mean, the Toy Story 2 game is pretty well remembered and it's pretty decent as a collect-a-thon. So that one's good. But everything else was like a total wash. Right. Um, and like a lot of the cool stuff was like T-rated and stuff. And I was like, like 10 at the time. So it just it was like... Harder to justify. Buy it for you. I don't know. I probably could have convinced them, but it would have been like hard. And I, again, I wouldn't know which ones were good. See, the important thing to understand about me is I'm like the first millennial in my extended family. I didn't have anyone who was like older than me who could like guide me through anything. Yeah. Like my the the only people who were close to my age were all women. My older cousins, the youngest of which is eight years older than me. So, and none of them are like into nerdy things at all. So. It was just me totally on my own. Like, if it weren't for the internet and getting into the internet big time when I was, like, 11 or so, there would have been no way for me to, like, learn Jack, right? Yeah. Um, other, I mean, and then also magazines, but I didn't get into magazines until a little bit later, but... So, yeah, PS1, that was kind of a wash. Then we got Game Boy Advances, Game Boy Advance SPs, me and my brother. But again, I only ever had a few games for it. You know what maybe may have conditioned me to buy so few games is because we got the Game Boy Advance SPs right before we went to Uganda. Uh -huh. So it was just eight straight months, me locked in this cultural void with nothing but uh, Superstar Saga and Donkey Kong Country and Sonic Battle. Uh, and also a Star Wars game, but it was like really bad. It was like, mm. out, it was like a nothing game. I see. Uh, you, we, got, we, we probably played it a grand total of five minutes. Even though we were basically locked in a, in a world with almost nothing else to do. Right. Uh, 
that's a big part of why Superstar Saga I have a lot of fond memories with, because it's like the only, it was like the only happiness I could have, really. Uh, in terms of like fun things. But yeah, so I just went so long without having any games, I guess I just got used to the idea of almost never buying games. I don't know. Makes sense, I, I guess, guess. I guess also when I was like 14 or so, I mostly was buying music and stuff. Another thing you really shouldn't ever pay for. Well. <laughs> Unless you really want to, but like you shouldn't be paying for music when you haven't even listened to it yet. No, I, I agree with that. <clears throat> right, but that's what I did, because I just like, I want to do it right, you know? I did plenty of that myself. Back in L day. L day. Yeah. But then we got a GameCube pretty late. It was like 2005 when we got a GameCube. Um, but again, only got a few games for it. My brother bought more games for it. He got into like the Medal of Honor stuff. We, you know, we eventually got like Smash Bros, you know? And it was like, it was like yeah, this is cool, you know? Um, yeah. Settle it in Smash? Set what? Oh, uh, anyway. <laughs> and then we got a Wii. Yeah. We we saved it for a Wii. We were we were me and both of him, me and him were both me and my brother were both really hyped about the Wii. Mostly me. We saved up for it. Most expensive thing we had bought at the time, and we got it like early in early 2007. Uh, then in 2010 we got a PS3, and then that's it. Oh yeah, then we bought a Wii U. You know, years later, and then my brother bought a PS4, and that's it. That's our whole history with consoles. So the reason I'd asked... Oh, I also is, have a PS2. And I bought a bunch of other retro consoles in that time, but, you know. Right. The reason <clears> I had asked is that, like, I think, although this doesn't seem to really, like, have not been the case for you or whatever, but with with us, it's that we were very much Nintendo fanboys, and so we only had Nintendo consoles. Oh, yeah, so, I was, I, I was like, a Nintendo person. Um, right. Like, up until a few weeks into, years into the Wii being out. I, I, for me, it was, like, console warring is, like, funny. And so I was just like doing it, like 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 other kids would be like, hey, you know the PSP sucks. Like, I wasn't like, I don't think I was being like annoying about it. I, I was just like, I thought it was a funny thing to do, right. is to like act like, oh yeah, the other consoles are stupid. Like I totally bought into Nintendo's like ploy about the Wii, you know, how about like the motion controls and how you know offline multiplayer is is, is a better experience and stuff, and how like trying to race to the top with graphics is is futile, you know. Well, was that, I don't think that's Nintendo themselves' rhetoric so much as their right. fans' rhetoric. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, like, for the first couple of years, I'd really bought into that whole like narrative. But you know, then nothing really outstanding came out for the Wii that used those motion controls, and it's like, okay. Yeah. And even the ones that did it decently well, I didn't ever have the money to buy those games, so it's like, okay then. Yeah. My. I was just like, I just think that maybe. Well, obviously this, this logic doesn't apply to your scenario, but just that we would, that me and Victor might have been able to afford more games because we were limiting ourselves to one console, you know, Makes like, sense, to, to yeah. one company's consoles. But, uh, but I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> we definitely, like, bought mostly video games for a long time. This yeah. fucking Yeah, we video. definitely, me and my brother did not, definitely did not have more consoles than, than you did. Like, yeah. it was just a matter of... We probably didn't have as much money in absolute terms. Right. But, well, uh... I don't know. That depends on what year you're talking about. But, I mean, I don't know how poor you guys were. I don't know. Just never in a... Like, buying games is easy to do, I guess. Kind of way. I don't know. I think my parents kind of have the mentality of, like, you only really need to buy, like, one game a year, right? Like... <laughs> yeah, like, you only... <laughs> which is kind of true. Like, depending on your standards. Yeah, it can be. I mean, I, I've always said that I think that a lot of the fondness for games like, for instance, Sonic the Hedgehog is out of the fact that for kids growing up with it, that's the only game they had. And if you only have one game, then you're going to get really good at that game, you know? Because Sonic's a game that gets more fun the better you are at it. Like, if you play and you're not good, the game fucking blows ass because... You just constantly are running into things and losing momentum, and you feel like an idiot, and it sucks. But if you get amazing at the game, then you build up momentum constantly, and you're like, you know, and then it becomes pretty ass. good. Yeah, but like, but so for 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 <clears throat> like when I think, how could a game that relies so much 
on playing it so many times get popular it's like well if you were young and this was the game you had then you're gonna play it a thousand fucking times you know yes and so i think that's a huge element of with all the older games like that they were you know people always say older games were harder and more complicated and it's because you were expected to play through them more than once and yeah. to sort of internalize the game. And also, you didn't know how to play video games. This was a point right. that the Game Over thinker made, was like, if if time went backwards and you experienced the Zelda games in reverse order, you'd probably call the older ones easier because you would have uh, learned the basics of Zelda mechanics in reverse order. Like, you know, when a yeah. kid plays Twilight Princess for the first time, he's not going to know what to do. Whereas right. you know, you basically already have had half the design document memorized, yeah. you know, because you've played Ocarina. Yeah. And that's kind of why the Souls games were seen as so much harder early on, because yeah. they were a different kind of game with all new mechanics to learn. But then people were able to plow through all the other ones. Yeah, <clears throat> well, I mean, depends on... And yeah, it's usually the new people who don't know what the fuck they're doing. When right. They're the I was like, game. first time playing Dark Souls, I was just like, taking forever just to like, get the controls down, just to get through the undead bird. And now it's like a fucking cakewalk. I mean, you've all seen me. I'm not good, generally great at video games, but I've managed to beat all the Dark Souls games just by <clears throat> once you learn them, it ain't right. that hard anymore. Right. So you could, you can, if you want to, learn a new type of game, not as a kid, by just yeah. being a determined. You know, like, like hey, Mario 2D platformers. Like I didn't play them until I was around like 14 or so, thanks to like the Virtual Console. But I just sat down, put well, on podcasts. Well, sure, but and, like. My, my point about uh, Sonic is, like, I mean, yeah, I was terrible at the Souls games until I learned them, but... You still enjoyed yourself. Yeah, they're, they're satisfying to play on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Like, to me, right. the Sonic games, I just can't... Like, until you're good at them, to me, they're just awful. They're just awful, awful games because they're, they feel so bad to, to lose in, you know? <sighs> uh, I, don't know I don't really feel that strongly about it, but... I mean, <clears throat> maybe I needed this guy to be alive. What? Yeah. Wait, look, there was a guy in here, right? No? Okay. Gosh, we sure are talking about video games a lot. Well, it's a Let's Play show. We should be. <laughs> yes. We don't usually on Digi Bros just because, uh. All right. Know. Do we, hey, do we need to do a new episode? Um, probably soon. What okay, time did we... we start this one? I don't know. I know a whole uh, one of the main conversation points in Digi Bros is how long have we been doing this episode? Yeah. Which is kind of why I felt like maybe we hey let's just say it's you know two hours thirty minutes on the recording so let's just cut it off here because it's an easy number to remember. That makes sense. Right. Next time on this. More of this.